I can't believe that in all of the world of science and the brand, you know, the amazing laboratories that we have, there haven't been some scientists that have reverse engineered this or figured this out. Can't be that difficult. It's a resonant harmonic frequency of boiling water. A 92-year-old Christchurch inventor claims to have come up with a novel way to make a cup of tea. He's invented a contraption that he claims uses the power of sound to boil water. Beverly Lockhart went to investigate. It looks like a desk lamp is cool to the touch and appears to be doing nothing until it comes into contact with water. 92-year-old former Spitfire pilot Peter Davey claims his invention uses the power of sound to boil water. Yes, I are. Uh, they, uh, they're a bit baffled how it works. Nobody really knows how it works. Davey believes high-frequency sonic vibrations emitted from within the silver bulb cause the water to boil. He says the idea came to him 50 years ago when he noticed different saxophone notes caused different household items to rattle. The mains powered gizmo has experts intrigued. Never seen anything like it in my life, as they say. Professor Williamson has his doubts about Davy's acoustic theory and suspects there are two simple electrodes inside the boiler. It's the conductivity of the water that provides the the path for the for the current and provides the resistance to give the heating. I'm careful of, that I then divulge everything. I'm waiting to get a manufacturer that's prepared to put some money into it. And if he does get it on the shelves, he's already got one interested customer. If I saw one in a shop, I'd buy one because I, I, I think they're an interesting little bit of technology. However it is they work, they work. But for now, Davy is savouring his gizmo's success and sticking to his own unique theory on how it works. But what is sound? What is sound? Because we think that sound is just something that travels at a finite uh, speed. Well, that's been busted now because in Tennessee, uh, you, you studied at, at, uh, in Tennessee, didn't you, Brooks? Uh, at the Middle State Tennessee University in 2005, there were three high school students and two undergraduates that proved that sound travels beyond the speed of light. I'm not going to go into that, but that's an interesting thing to contemplate. That's one of the best kept secrets of science and physics. Never made it into the mainstream news bulletins. Sound boils water. This is a guy called Peter Davy in New Zealand. Since 1940, this guy's been boiling water with sound, sound frequency. It's not complicated because everything has a resonance. Everything in the creation and in physical form has its own fundamental resonant frequencies. If we understand the resonance and the sound behind the resonance, we can do everything. Because if sound created the universe and all things in it, because that was done by God, then we should be able to use sound to do everything else. A 92-year-old Christchurch inventor claims to have come up with a novel way to make a cup of tea. He's invented a contraption that he claims uses the power of sound to boil water. Beverly Lockhart went to investigate. It looks like a desk lamp is cool to the touch and appears to be doing nothing until it comes into contact with water. 92-year-old former Spitfire pilot Peter Davy claims his invention uses the power of sound to boil water. Yes, I are. Uh, they, uh, they're a bit baffled how it works. Nobody really knows how it works. Davy believes high-frequency sonic vibrations emitted from within the silver bulb cause the water to boil. He says the idea came to him 50 years ago when he noticed different saxophone notes caused different household items to rattle. The mains powered gizmo has experts intrigued. Never seen anything like it in my life, as they say. Professor Williamson has his doubts about Davy's acoustic theory and suspects there are two simple electrodes inside the boiler. It's the conductivity of the water that provides the the path for the for the current and provides the resistance to give the heating. I'm careful of, that I then divulge everything. I might need to get a manufacturer that's prepared to put some money into it. And if he does get it on the shelves, he's already got one interested customer. If I saw one in a shop, I'd buy one because I, I, I think they're an interesting little bit of technology, however it is they work, they work. 
But for now, Davey is savouring his gizmo's success and sticking to his own unique theory on how it works. Beverly Lockhart, 3 News. And in there lies the problem. He's dead. He took his secret to his grave. We will never find out until we go there, try and wrestle, wrestle it out of his family to share the secret with the rest of the world. I can't believe that in all of the world of science and the brand, you know, the amazing laboratories that we have, there haven't been some scientists that have reverse engineered this or figured this out. Can't be that difficult. It's a resonant harmonic frequency of boiling water. Reverse engineer it. Measure the resonant harmonic frequency of boiling water and build the device. I don't have the laboratory to do it, but, you know, I've asked so many people to go out and do it, and no one's done it. So, but what we learn from this experience is we're here at this conference talking about free energy. I believe free energy means free to the world, not just free that we can suck it out of the, the vacuum and then sell it to the rest of the world. That's no longer free energy. I believe it's crucial that we start thinking about free energy as when you find it, like this guy, give it to the world for free. Because if you don't, they're going to get to you, they're going to get rid of you, and no one's going to get it. They were waiting. I, can't, I can imagine what the they, they did when uh, Peter Davy died. They breathed a sigh of relief. Said, oh, thank God he's gone. And he was too greedy to tell the world how the simple thing worked. Thank God this human greed gene is so powerful that it prevents people from sharing this beautiful stuff. That's what I have a problem with. So what I urge anyone here at this conference to do, if you do find something like this, a source of free energy, do not keep it to yourself. Do not try and gain from the rest of humanity. Put it on the internet. Make videos. Put it out as widely as you can. Share it for free with the world. It will come back to you in abundance that you can't imagine. Yes. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Sound levitates. All ancient cultures talk about levitating things with sound, not just sound, but also with mind and thought. Now, we hear about it all the time, but until you see something being levitated by sound, it's difficult to comprehend.
Now, is that the beads that are generating the sound? It's the, this silver part, this horn is vibrating up and down 22,000 times a second. Okay. The same for the top one. So the, that really fast vibration causes, creates the sound by vibrating the air. So those, that, that creates this, uh, the air vibrations create a standing, what we call a standing wave, where the two, the two opposite vibrations cancel each other out at three times an inch as you go along, the vertical direction. So the, these polystyrene beads, they sit at the points where the two sound waves cancel each other. Interesting. Is, are they levitating magnetically? Yeah, it's just the sound, it's just the, the air pressure basically. Air so, pressure? Yeah. How much does each bead weigh? About? Oh, they're just plastic beads. They're really they're light. Plastic. Yeah, they're light. Yeah.